hope you don't mind my not getting dressed up for you. Looks like it's working. Uh, yeah. uh, I was just curious, you know, if you could tell me just a little bit about your dad, you know, just... just well, I mean, he was a very strong influence in my life. Uh, he grew up and born in Columbus, Ohio, went east to school, both to St. George's at high school level and then to Yale. Uh, before his graduation, or just that, they graduated early in 17, and he went off to the field artillery, went to Fort Sill, Oklahoma, then to the overseas to France in World War II. Then he came back and worked for the Simmons Company, which was a, a, a kind of a hardware company. He found the guy running it was a crook, and he kind of turned him in. He was scared to death, uh, and went back to St. Louis, where he married mother, and they it was from St. Louis. And he went back, and I'm a little unclear what the next job, but then he was sent uh, to um, to Boston with one of the big rubber companies, or not Firestone, but another big one. And he stayed there for a short period of time, and I was born in Milton, Mass., and he, you know, we were only there six months, and then he moved down to New York with Brown Brothers, uh, Brown Brothers Harriman and Company, actually with W.A. Harriman, then it became Brown Brothers Harriman, which he became, of which he became the managing partner with very distinguished partners like Roland Harriman. Averill Harriman was a part of it, uh, Robert Lovett. Uh, they had a marvelous firm, private banking firm. And then he went, then he, during that time, he, get, he did heliomycinary things like the, he was head of the USO, uh, following John D. Rockefeller and that, I think. He was president of the U.S. Golf Association back in the 30s. Uh, and he was very active in a community in the town meeting at Greenwich, of which he was the moderator. It's kind of like the mayor of Greenwich. And then he went on to the U.S. Senate. He became finance chairman of the party sometime in the late 40s or early 50s. Ran for the Senate unsuccessfully in 50 against Benton. Ran for the Senate successfully in 52 against either Ribicoff or McMahon. Uh, Ribicoff or, uh, uh, gosh, I can't remember. And then he was elected twice, and then he decided not to run again. He was elected in 52 to fulfill the unexpired term of Brian McMahon, who died. And then he, uh, then he, uh, after these 10 years, why he uh, decided not to run again. I think he always regretted that. So he got out of the Senate at the end of 62 went back to Brown Brothers Harriman, but more important to me than all that was his being a marvelous leader, above reproach ethically, and strong father. So that in a nutshell is a little... What, what uh, <coughs> did he always have an interest in politics? Well, or? not really, he was an interest in serving, but he had, it in, during that those formative years in his 50s, early mm -hmm. 50s, he began to get very interested in it, yeah. Uh, in but my, I don't think it was a lifelong thing. Uh, in my collectibles, uh, I noticed that so much is I can press that bush, you know, on the posters and yeah. bumper stickers. And well, all. he ran with at the same time as Ike in 52 and then again in 56, and of course that was a good thing for anybody running because yeah. Dad knew Eisenhower, Eisenhower respected him. And running with Ike in 52 was a landslide year, and it was very helpful to Dad then, and as, as again, as it was in 56. Did, um, I, I remember years ago you wrote me a note and said that uh, your first meeting with the president was with Ike, and when your dad took, him, took you to the Oval Office, and I was wondering if you could remember any of the details. I don't, that. unfortunately. That's the kind of thing I just regrettably... Uh, uh -huh. Short of memory. Did they take pictures? You know, I've never seen. I don't a picture think they didn't do it like they used to do. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, that would I wish be they a had. wonderful photo. Yeah, I don't think. I think I would have seen it. In mothers in our house or something, but I never did. I don't remember it at all. I remember at one of my uh, political collector shows up in uh, Connecticut, well, a little lady came in and and uh, she. Everybody in the hobby, political collector hobby, knows that I'm I'm the Bush man, and so they're always uh, you know they give me the the items, but uh, it, at maximum price. <laughs> when they know that, but she she came up and she said, "Well, you know, I knew Prescott Bush, and said that I met him uh, you know, very many years ago. And the thing that I wanted you to know, and he was telling she was telling us to me, is that he was the most gentle and kind person I have ever nice, met. Yeah. And that just intrigued me. I said, you know, that's when I started my quest in collecting more Prescott Bush items and 
and try I wish to find I had something to give to you. Give you, I'd give them to you, but uh, I don't have a darn thing. Oh, I know. I have. I, I bought a few photos of some of his items that I was going to show you. Yeah, I'd like you to see them. You don't mind? I'd love to see them. Uh, but it's just fascinating. And the folks in Connecticut, they love collecting the yeah. Bishop Bush items. And sometimes they confuse them with your, your brother's items. Uh -huh. uh, from his, his well, he was a decent, <coughs> an honorable man, a real leader. Dad was a, in business. He was almost unparalleled, but That's he he's, uh, he had such a great an impact. impact on I, I've, I've been so amazed by the impact that he had on so many areas of life, on yeah. golf, and, you know, oh, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. He was a great yeah. championship golfer. In fact, he shot his age when he was in the seventies and all of that. But he he um, he was a scratch player. <laughs> For a long time, which is pretty darn good. Long hitter, scratch player. Good, good years. I've gotten to know so many members of your family. Uh, your sister, uh, so sweet, and uh, I had contacted them years ago to see if they had any of your dad's stuff, and they said, "Well, I don't guess anybody ever saved any of that." No, I don't think. I think that's right. I <laughs> think it would have been different had we known why. Right. It might have been different. Right. But they, uh, I had always, you had invited me way back when, uh, or with one of the groups, to come up to Kitty Buckport, and I'd always wished to have met your mom. She seemed no, such she a was sweet great. lady. Yeah. Such a wonderful person. And all I ever heard was so, such, such so positive. And that I, they said that if anything, she seemed to be more of a collector than anyone. So none of the kids collected anything. Well, I think that's true, and I don't know that she did. She saved letters for me in the Pacific that are all up at the library. Right which are rather, the archivist thinks are very special to have just for history, sure. but, but other than that, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think there's any great, it's more cleaning stuff out, throwing it away, which is too yeah, bad. Yeah, I know. Did you lose many items when the hurricane hit uh, the house? Yeah, we lost a lot of, a lot of pictures of yeah. mother and dad and that kind of thing. That's such a shame. Yeah. That's such a shame. They just got wiped out and went out to sea, along with the furniture and that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's, that's a but anyway, we were lucky with place the things, but not the, not the, what you call a collectivist, I mean, that's yeah. hard to get married to do. I know you were uh, down here in Texas during his campaigns and all, but did you ever go up, uh, maybe election night, no. or are you just were too busy working? And Never did. Yeah, it was a long way, and we couldn't afford the trip, and, you know, we were living in West Texas then, and I was chairman of the Eisenhower-Nixon fundraisers and, and fundraising for Ike in 52 in Midland, and again in 56. And those were the years he was running, and it just, you know, we were very close, but we just didn't go that way back. That was a long, that was a real effort in those days. Sure, I can imagine. We can't get around like we do nowadays. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I had... Uh, there is a picture of him and me and, and, and George W. the dresser has. You may have that, I don't know. Standing in front of an old... Uh, Lockheed Ventura Aeroplane, because Dad was on the board of Dresser Industries, mm -hmm. among other companies, mm -hmm. CBS, Dresser, uh, Prudential Insurance, and a bunch of companies back in the late 40s, and he came to, out to Midland when I was there, and there's a picture of him and me and then George in our arms, which mm -hmm. might be a good one if we could find Oh, that's great. That's great. You know, they, uh, I, I sent you one of these, and I, don't, I guess you can see it, but that was one of your dad's posters. Yeah that uh, I was so impressed with, and every time I show it to someone, I had to bid in an auction for it. Really? And um, all the folks in Connecticut were trying to get it away from me. And everybody says, oh, that looks so much like the president. And it then, does. And then uh, it, it certainly does. And then uh, George W., uh, uh, his, his pictures, you know, oftentimes are, are uh, compared to the two of you. Yeah, look at that. This is interesting. Yeah, that's all the my uh, yeah. my pick of the best push buttons from the two campaigns. Uh, I'll, I'll let you keep that if you. If you I like. you said you sent it. I, I sent one, but he probably ended it. up at the library. When did you send it? It's it last uh, summer is when it was uh, issued. Yeah, well, I remember seeing this, but I just don't remember. And I know I would have looked at the inside. The uh, those are uh, were my favorites. Some of them were given to me by George W. Some of those buttons, and oh, really? uh, Doro gave me uh, the ones from Maine. And yeah. I've, I've gotten all your family involved in my collecting habit. <laughs> this picture, I remember. This was Dad's postcard for his family. George W. was telling me that that, that picture of y'all in that was uh, 
staged elsewhere, maybe. Well, we place. were put in there. Right. Yeah, we were added in. I forgot how it comes. He had that behind his desk down at the governor's office. Yeah. And, uh, I thought that was that was interesting. And in fact, we have uh, several postcards with uh, with y'all all together on your dad's campaign. I think he issued about twenty different ones. With, uh, but that's we, yeah. we're our organization's a nonprofit deal that just supporting uh, political collecting and, yeah, and uh, yeah. preserving all this stuff so that uh, that we can share it with future generations. And we just have, of course, that, your poster there on the front is one of my, my favorites. Uh, and of course, can, that's yeah. the brochure. That's the 70 brochure. Yeah. But it, the poster was identical to it. And uh, uh, yeah, like, I still have one of those. This is a picture I took of George W. back in 70. Uh, gosh, look at I, this. I was driving him in the uh, Yamboree Parade. Remember, you've come up and spoke at the Gilmer Yamboree uh, yeah. up in East Texas uh, before. And, and uh, you, neat picture. you couldn't come to the, uh, to the uh, event. And so they said, well, can, uh, uh, I think they, everybody called him George Jr. then. Yeah. Jr. could come down. And I said, well, certainly. And of course, I was only 17 years old. And yeah. So I said, wonderful. And poor George, he, he uh, we put him in the back. Uh, and he didn't have anything to hold on to, and I just tried to drive real slow. That's Are you driving this thing? I was driving that yeah. thing for yeah. <laughs> you. You can have that. It. That's an extra one. Oh, like that. I'd love to show it to his mother. He, he tells me that that uh, was what, one of his first political uh, activities. Or age, yeah. Yes, uh, he, uh, I, I sent him one of those. Where was this taken? In Gilmer. Gilmer, Gilmer Texas. Texas yeah. uh, up in North That's Texas. great. I had made the little sign on the on the side of the car and everything. Oh, yeah, that's it. wonderful. That was fun. <coughs> Thank you, Ron. But, Thank uh, you sir, very much. Well, we, we, we've had a wonderful time with the Bushes all through the years. You know Don Rhodes who works oh, yes, for the yes, Don's yeah. a great, he, he's a, you talk about a guy that never throws away anything. Yeah. He's, he's it. Well, I remember in the uh, White House years when I would talk to him over the phone. And, yeah. Uh, you know, I donated my 1,400-piece collection to the Bush Library, all my yeah. Bush collection. Yeah. And, uh, uh, at the Fantastic. time, I was trying to arrange it with Don to maybe bring it up to the White House and get it to you, and yeah. uh, it just never was, you know, where we could yeah. work it out with as busy as they were. Yeah, it was else. pretty tough in those days. That was That's a marvelous, marvelous donation. What are you doing with the rest of your life, Ron? Well, I work for the Texas Department of Human Services. Do you? And that's the AFDC Food Stamp Medicaid program. Yeah. And we're putting people to work left and right. Oh, yeah. And, uh, since George W. has gotten in there, uh, our whole program emphasis has turned around. And we are uh, uh, now, in order to, of course, uh, keep the benefits, they have to look for work. And they're finding something. They are finding work. Uh, of course, they're under time limits now. We have a uh, three uh, three year maximum now in the yeah. state, and then, of course, five years for the federal. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, we're just uh, you know, excited about it because for the That's first wonderful. time we're seeing people that have just gotten hooked on the system uh, going back to work. And then Kathy works for the Texas Department of Health. She's out of uh, where? Gilmer? Tyler. Tyler? Tyler. Yeah. And I'm in Marshall. You might qualify for Rose Queen or no. Yeah, yeah, Rose. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you can <laughs> my medical. Yeah, they have that all the time. That's fun, sure. yeah. I was up fishing with George at his place in Athens a while back. Oh, and yes. then Barbara and I are yes. going back. She's not seen that we're going to go there at Easter. How is Barbara doing? She's fine. She's in Florida right now. We just went wonderful. yesterday coming back to Delaware. Well, no, she wow. went down to give a speech, but she'll be back this afternoon. She had a new hip put in. Yes. And that's yes. Uh, coming along real well. Real wonderful. well. Well, that's just great. I, I, uh, we were so concerned when we heard about the surgery. And well, I, it was routine, really, because yeah. she had one put in last year, and it worked so well. She still had pain on the other side, so she had that done. She's doing great. Oh, that's great. And y'all live not far from here? No, we live right across, across here. Yeah. Really? Five minutes from here. Well, that is wonderful. Or ten we minutes. weren't really sure where your office was. I knew where Memorial this was. This is wonderful. This is this the greatest. Is beautiful. Here, I'll show you the, the view out here. It's uh, really where it's really marvelous. Wonderful. That's here, look. Let me. Sure. We won't be here long, but I'll just. Well, Ron, it's good to see you. I can think of if I can run across any stuff about my 